There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ3. Let's pretend it's from the 2001 AP Precalculus exam. This problem is about sinusoidal modeling, which means modeling a real world situation with a sine function or a cosine function. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. A windshield wiper blade on a car window rotates back and forth. When the wiper blade is farthest to the left or farthest to the right, the measure of the angle formed by the wiper blade and the vertical center line, see the figure, is 0.75 radians. At time t equals 0 seconds, the wiper blade is farthest to the left. The wiper blade then rotates to the right and passes the vertical center line. At time t equals 1 seconds, the wiper blade is farthest to the right for the first time. Then the wiper blade rotates left, passes the vertical center line, and is farthest to the left again at time t equals 2 seconds. As the wiper blade rotates, the measure of the angle formed by the wiper blade and the vertical center line periodically increases and decreases. We're talking about this angle, h of t, right here. The sinusoidal function h models the measure of the angle in radians formed by the wiper blade and the center line as a function of time t in seconds. A negative value of h of t indicates that the wiper blade is to the left of the vertical center line. A positive value of h of t indicates that the wiper blade is to the right of the vertical center line. Part A. The graph of h and its dash midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points, f, g, j, k, and p, are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. Let's see if we can determine the maximum output value, the minimum output value, and the middle output value. h of t gives the size of the angle between the wiper blade and the vertical center line. We are told that when the wiper blade is farthest to the left or farthest to the right, this angle is 0.75 radians. Additionally, an angle to the right of the vertical center line is considered positive, while an angle to the left of the center line is considered negative. So this angle will be negative 0.75 radians. The minimum value for h of t will be this negative 0.75 radians when the wiper blade is farthest to the left. The greatest value of h of t will be positive 0.75 when the wiper blade is farthest to the right. The middle value for h of t will be 0 when the wiper blade is right on the center line. These are the output values for all five points. Now let's see if we can determine the input values. At time t equals 0 seconds, the wiper blade is farthest to the left. So t equals 0 should be at a minimum value of negative 0.75. That means we need to pick one of these low points and call it t equals 0. So we could put the 0 here or here, or we could extend the graph an extra quarter of a period to the left and call this low point t equals zero. I'm going to do it this way because that will cause all of the other input values to be positive. There's nothing wrong with putting zero here, for example, and then having some negative input values to the left. That's perfectly fine. You are allowed to have negative input values. Um, I just like doing it this way. At time t equals 1 seconds, the wiper blade is farthest to the right for the first time. Farthest to the right causes h of t to have a value of positive 0.75, its largest value. So t equals 1 should be at the first high point on the graph of h of t. The input value of point f 
should be t equals 1. Then the wiper blade rotates left and is farthest to the left again at time t equals 2 seconds. So t equals 2 seconds should be at the next minimum value for h of t. So point j should be at t equals 2. Let's review what this graph means. The wiper blade started at its farthest position to the left at negative 0.75 radians. Then it moved to the center line and on to its farthest position to the right, positive 0.75 radians. Then it began to swing back through the midline and back to its starting position, farthest to the left again. So one cycle means going from left to right and then back to left again. If f is at 1, then this point must be 0 0.5. We can find the remaining input values by counting by 0 0.5. So this is 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 2 and 3. We now have input values and output values for all five points but we are not finished until we make the list. So we will say point F is at 1 comma 0 0.75. Point G is at 1.5 comma 0. Point J is at 2 comma negative 0 0.75. Point K is at 2.5 comma 0. And point P is at 3 comma 0 0.75. Part B, the function h can be written in the form h of t is equal to a sine b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of constants a, b, c, and d. I want you to memorize that the parent function for y equals sine t looks like this. It starts at the midline, it goes up and down and back. Memorize that the parent function y equals cosine t starts at its maximum value, it falls and then rises. h of t is a sine function, so let's trace one of these on the graph of h of t. I will use this period of h of t to write my equation. The amplitude of a sinusoidal function is the maximum value minus the middle value. 0.75 minus 0 is simply 0.75. The amplitude is closely related to the a value. They are either the same or they are opposites. In other words, the a value will sometimes be negative while the amplitude is always positive. If the period that we choose is oriented the exact same way as the parent function, I sort of think of this as being right side up, then the a value will be positive and be equivalent to the amplitude. So in this case, the amplitude is positive 0.75 and the a value is also 0.75. If I were to write my equation based on this period of h of t, I would make the a value negative because this is an upside down sine function compared to the parent function. Now let's find this b value. We have memorized that the b value for a sinusoidal function is always 2 pi divided by the period. We can measure the period from low point to low point. From 0 to 2 seconds, the period is 2. That means that the b value will be 2 pi divided by 2. The 2's cancel out and the b value is pi and I'm just going to fill that in right here. Next we need the C value. The C value will always be the opposite of the phase shift, which is the beginning input value for the period that you are using. Since this period of H of T starts at 0 0.5 seconds, the C value will be negative 0 0.5. Again, the C value and the starting point, the phase shift, will always be opposites. The D value always corresponds to the midline. In this case, the midline is zero, 
which means the D value is zero, which we don't even need to write if we are just filling in A, B, C, and D in the equation. On the AP exam, you're allowed to leave your answer like this, or you can list out the values of A, B, C, and D like this. Part C, refer to the graph of H in part A. The T coordinate of G is T1, and the T coordinate of J is T2. So the interval from T1 to T2 goes from G to J. C part one, on the interval from T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? Is H positive and increasing, positive and decreasing, negative and increasing, or negative and decreasing? First, let's decide whether H of T is positive or negative on this interval. Notice that the output values are between zero and negative 0 0.75. So, H of T is negative on this interval. All of the output values are below zero. Also, from left to right, H of T is decreasing. We can see that the output values are falling on this interval. H of T is negative and decreasing between T1 and T2. So, the answer is D. C part two. Describe how the rate of change of H is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. We have learned if H of T is concave up, the rate of change of H is increasing, and if H of T is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On the interval from T1 to T2, H of T is concave up. This describes how the rate of change of H is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. You can get full credit by answering with a single word. Just say increasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.